Hello students in today's session we are going to see that if a complex function is having its derivative to be zero then it will tend to be a constant function so let's see what the exact statement of this concept is and that is preposition 2.10 and let let's view the statement yes statement 2.10 uh, of the preposition states that if g is an open set which is connected also and we are having a differentiable function from the domain g to the range the set of complex numbers f from g to c such that its derivative is zero for every z belongs to g then the function is a constant that means it is constant in the entire complex plane so before starting uh, with how to prove the same let's simply see a mathematical mem okay so this you can see the mem and start reading what it is saying okay uh, first you have the constant c sitting there and uh, actually c is very afraid uh, that the derivative operator is coming and then the function exponential function is saying to c please come close to me so that the derivative won't affect us okay then you can see the partial derivative with respect to y coming and then all of a sudden uh, the function c into e raised to x is suddenly afraid because of course they will become zero just a symbol mem you can see a lot of such mems uh, if you search uh, in the uh, web uh, and uh, of course these types of mems are actually very funny and uh, of course that will trigger uh, our uh, learning learning experiences and you can try out making some of them after uh, learning uh, specific topics of interest uh, and uh, share with your friends okay so let's see our statement once again if you have forgotten we have an open set g which is connected and we have the differentiable function f from g to c uh, such that uh, its derivative uh, is zero for every z in g then f is a constant so let's try to prove the same now okay proof so let's see what all things we have at hand okay uh, we have a g right uh, such that this g is uh, both an open and connected set also we have a function which has the domain to be this g and the range to be set of complex numbers uh, and it's given that it is uh, having its derivative to be zero for every set in g this is what we have at hand and our aim is to prove that our function is a constant for every set belongs to c this is our aim aim to prove okay for that what you are first going to do is we fix a particular complex number set not i'm calling that particular complex number to be set suffix 0 uh, that is going to be in g okay so simply i'm drawing uh, the domain g to be here okay 
uh, and it is open. Okay, this is an open set inside G, inside uh, the complex or set of complex numbers. And suppose this is C. Just imagine this is the set of complex numbers. So our function f is coming from G to C. Okay. And now we are going to fix a particular set not in G. Of course, since f is a function, every uh, element inside the domain should have an image. So definitely there is an f of set not, right? Okay. I'm going to call this f of set not as w not. I'm going to call it. Okay. So our next step is call call f of set not equal to w not. Fine. Now we are going to define a set. Okay. I'm going to call that set capital A. This capital A is actually a subset of G. The elements will come from G and those elements have a particular property that the images of those element elements will be W0. Just think that there are some elements here in G, okay, such that these points are also mapped to this particular W0 sitting here, okay. These points are exactly mapped to the particular W0. So if those elements are mapped to this particular point W0, then we say that such elements will belong to this capital A. Okay. So that is what capital A means. Okay. So now let's see how we will move on. Okay. Now, let Z be an arbitrary point, arbitrary element inside this G. Okay. So we have the G here and we have the C here, just simply for our, okay. And uh, we had some one set not fixed here and we had uh, the w not to be the image of this set not f of set not and we defined some points uh, where all these points will have uh, what their image to be w not and called that set to be a okay now you're going to select an arbitrary point in G. Let it be somewhere, anywhere. Let's set it be here. Okay. Okay. Now you're going to uh, define a sequence. Okay. Define a sequence in A. Okay. That means, suppose if uh, the sequence is set ZN, every element in the sequence will be in A. Definitely, you know what is a sequence is, right? A sequence is actually a function. Let me call the function some, something else. Okay, I'm calling the function as H. As a function from the set of natural numbers, here we are thinking about complex numbers. So, it will be like, it will be like this. Uh, that means if I have a 1, you will have a corresponding, um, let me call here it as Zn. I'll call it, um, okay, I'll call it 7, right? So 1 will be mapped to set 1, 2 will be mapped to set 2, like that. Okay, it goes on. So each set 1, set 2, etc., set n, etc. is happening to be inside this capital A. That is what we are defining. The points are in A. Okay, simply that. And this particular sequence has a particular property. Okay, the particular property is that the sequence is convergent and where it converges is the point set. 
okay so we have to think about the existence of such a sequence in a uh, definitely uh, we can um, say that such a sequence exists because think about a constant sequence which is in a uh, such that um, it is tending to z okay uh, such a possibility is there um, so the existence is actually guaranteed for um, choosing such a sequence okay now since sudden belongs to a for every n belongs to the set of natural numbers we can say that the image of every element in the sequence will be definitely w not right that is how we defined for every n belongs to capital n right okay now since given that f is differentiable because of course its uh, derivative is given to be zero uh, in g if it is differentiable in g that will definitely imply the continuity of the same function in g it is continuous in g okay this i'm going to give as a question 1 for today's class question 1 solve it okay now how to move on okay now since uh, we are saying that f is continuous in g right f is continuous i'm sorry f is continuous in g what does that mean uh, suppose uh, suppose say f is uh, continuous at a particular point at a particular point uh, suppose say small a in g what does that mean uh, we write as uh, in symbols that limit of z tends to a f of z will exist as well as the value will be f of a okay this is the standard definition of continuity at a point right so uh, we can use the same here so here we have instead of z uh, and z and a here we will have z uh, and to be the term sitting here and the limiting point will be z okay uh, this will be f of z because f is continuous in every point of g okay that is continuous for every point in g okay so we can write like this so since uh, we have limit uh, n tends to infinity z n is equal to z okay we are having this we can just rewrite this like this that is a uh, limit instead of z n tends to z i can say n tends to infinity whenever n tends to infinity obviously we have z n to z n to tend to z right so we can write instead of z n tending to z i am going to write n tends to infinity uh, and uh, f of z n will be nothing but f of z i have just reframed the equation okay now so we are going to end up with something like this thus f of z okay f of z is equal to f of limit n tends to infinity z n we can write like this right okay and uh, f of z is also as it is continuous we said that f of z is equal to limit n tends to infinity f of z n it will be always correct right 
but for every sudden we had f of sudden to be w not so we can write this is equal to limit n tends to infinity w not right but w not is a constant fixed complex number so whenever n tends to infinity that is nothing but w not so this is going to say like f of z where z was the point to which our sequence was uh, tending that f of z is equal to w not right whenever a point has the image to be w not we can say that that point belongs to capital a as we have defined so okay this is something which we got now the z we have chosen is is belonging to capital a okay now note that the sequence is an arbitrary sequence in a that is the first thing we have to note okay and we said that its limiting point z belongs to a that is what we found out now that will imply whenever an arbitrary sequence is in a and suppose that is convergent the converging point or the limit point belongs to a this is the characterization of a closed set so we got a very important conclusion that is the set a which we defined is a closed set in g okay this is what we got okay now now we are going to fix a particular point a in a okay so note that f of a will be obviously w not okay definitely as a capital a is a subset of capital g we have this small a will belong to g right since capital a subset of capital g now now we are going to use the fact that g is an open set okay we have a belongs to g now see a belongs to g and we have that g is an open set in the set of complex numbers it is given so it is given okay so see suppose if g uh, i am going to give the g as this uh, note that i am choosing the boundary to be dotted because to emphasize that g is an open set in c okay now inside this g i am having an a okay so definitely i can find a particular radius uh, epsilon such that uh, i'm going to i can find a particular radius epsilon that the open ball centered at a with the radius epsilon is completely inside our open set g that is the characterization of an open set uh which we deal in topology okay so uh, we can find we can find a number epsilon greater than 0 such that the open ball centered at a having the radius epsilon lies completely inside our open set g this is because of the since we have this as the characterization or the definition of open sets okay 
now. So next I am claiming that I have a claim. The claim says B A of epsilon, B A of epsilon lies inside G. Okay. So I am having the G here, right? So I am going to claim that we already had an A, right? So suppose I am saying that we already proved that A is inside, of course A is inside G and we proved that A is uh, closed. Suppose think that this is A, capital A. And we have this to be BA of G. But our claim is, it cannot happen like this. The BA of G should be inside this capital A. That is a claim. Okay. It can't happen like this. Okay. So let's see. Okay. BA of epsilon is subset of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, here it is. Uh, BA of epsilon is nothing, uh, is contained in A. This is what we have to prove. Okay. So for that, what I have to do, choose a particular arbitrary point set inside BA of epsilon. And I have to show that this set belongs to A also. Okay. For that, I am going to define two functions. The first function is H. Okay. Uh, this H uh, is a function uh, which happens to be from closed interval 0, 1. Okay. To the set of complex numbers. Okay. And I'm going, to, I'm going to define like this h of t is equal to tz plus 1 minus t into a. So you can see that this is a definite combination, linear combination, convex combination of the point z which we just chose here and the point a which is the center of the open ball ba of epsilon. So, this is nothing but the line joining both of them, right? So, in the previous figure, you can note that suppose we chose a z inside this or some z inside this ba of g. So, this will be the line. This will be the line. Okay. I am going to define that line to be the function h of t. Okay. For every t belongs to closed interval 0, 1. Right? And uh, also note that uh, instead of this uh, Capital C, I can say that that will definitely be inside G, right? The image will be inside G because it is a line joining Z and A and definitely Z and A are belonging to G. So, the line joining them will be also inside the open set G, right? Okay. Next, define a function G, okay? This function, small g, is happening to be defined from G to C, okay, such that G of T is equal to the function G of T is equal to the function F of H of T. Okay, H of T we have defined here and uh, F is also already given in the hypothesis. F is the function we are working on. Okay, 
so we are uh, defining a composition of uh, f, f composition h to be the small g here this is the next function okay now now consider g of t minus g of s divided by t minus s i want something that's why i am uh, considering this fraction and this is definitely equal to g of t minus g of s i am i am going to multiply and divide it with uh, t minus s into z plus s minus t into a in the denominator and the same in the numerator this s minus t into a divided by t minus s both are the same right now now i am going to uh, apply the limits limit t tends to s okay g of t minus g of s divided by t minus s that is i am going to apply limits here okay that is nothing but the derivative at s right okay so this derivative we just saw that the derivative uh, or uh, g is we had it to be f composition h right f composition h dash of s okay this is what we end up now okay now i am going to show you an appendix you are going to work out yes look at uh, the A point three preposition. The preposition three in the appendix A. This is saying that if a function is happening to be from the domain closed interval A B to the set of complex number, and it is given to be differentiable with its uh, f dash of x to be zero, then f is a constant. Okay. you just think about this uh, preposition preposition you will have to work it out uh, definitely this is a real uh, the domain is a real uh, subset okay you have to prove it and then you have to think about the preposition a uh, preposition four in appendix a and definitely to be definite we want the b part of the preposition which says that if g is an open set of c containing f of closed interval ab and h is happening to be a function from g to the set of complex number c uh, and uh, this h is an analytic function if we are given so then h composition f is differentiable and h composition f dash of x is equal to h dash of f of x into f dash of x okay this is a a kind of uh, isomorphic or similar pattern uh, to that of the chain rule which had which we had seen earlier okay so let's just analyze okay this preposition uh, this is the first preposition which we require as we are going to prove uh, see uh, we have the open set g right uh, and yes we had our definitions of h and uh, f there right we'll just see how we can move on see here uh, we have uh, our function okay our function g to c having the domain g and c it is given and it is given uh, that the function uh, the derivative the derivative of it is uh, 
given to v0 right uh, and then what is it we have uh, we have our h h is definitely from closed interval ab we said that it is happening to be g itself the range will be g itself right so this was the criterion which uh, criterion of hypothesis which was given in the proposition so that is uh, well satisfied here and uh, so the hypothesis will uh, give us the ending to be f composition h is uh, differentiable and its uh, derivative can be applied with the chain rule okay that is what we are going to do here okay use that that appendix so i am giving you the question 2 to be appendix a point um 3 part b a point let me just check yes i know uh, this will be a point of uh, 4 okay this is first you have to prove a point 4b and also as the question 3 you will have to prove a point 3 appendix a point 3 this is the question 2 for today and this is the question 3 for today you have to prove it questions so we are going to apply the chain rule here so we will get this to be um, f dash of uh, f f dash of h of s into h dash of s right which is uh, nothing but h of s what is h of s uh, h of s i can write like this uh, f dash of s into z plus 1 minus s into just uh, change the variable t to s that's it uh, and 1 minus s into a right into h dash of s this was h of s so i have to apply the derivative with respect to s so when i am going to apply the derivative with respect to s here i will have uh, z right z plus a will be taken out it is a constant and then you have 1 minus s inside 1 minus s i am going to apply derivative with respect to s and that i am going to get as minus 1 0 minus 1 so that will be the derivative of h dash of s so you are going to get f dash of s z plus 1 minus s into a into z minus a this is what you got now right so now this is a point look at this point okay this is a point sitting inside inside g definitely it is a point sitting inside g we had all earlier given in the hypothesis that the function has its derivative to be zero in every point of g so that is nothing but zero right to be zero into z minus a that that is giving us g dash of s to be zero okay now you are going to use the appendix a point three a point three so just now you got g g was happening to be from closed interval instead of a b i am having here to be zero one to c 
and now you got it as g dash of s is equal to 0 okay whereas for every s belongs to close enough 0 1 definitely s was an arbitrary arbitrary one point right so from the appendix a point 3 you're going to get that g is a constant g is a constant fine now what you're going to do okay, g is a constant now let's see we have uh, g applied on the point 0 and g applied on 1 both will be definitely the same because g is a constant right now consider f of z okay this g of 0 when we are thinking about g of 0 how can you treat this treat this g of 0 g of 0 is nothing but think about g of 0 okay g of 0 just forget f of z just forget f of z for now think of g of 0 okay g of 0 is equal to g of h of 0 i'm sorry g not g of h of 0 that was um sorry sorry that is uh, f of h of 0 right yes f of h of 0 now what was h of 0 i can write instead of h i have inst i am going to write t okay uh, 0 instead of t i am having 0 0 into z plus 1 minus 0 into a right is it right? Yes. So g of 0 is nothing but f of 0 plus a that is nothing but f of a. So I am going to write this g of 0 as f of a. Is it okay? Fine. Now you are going to think about, yes, you are going to think about g of 1. Okay. What is g of 1? g of 1 is equal to f of h of 1 which is equal to f of instead of t i am having 1 1 into z plus 1 minus 1 into a right that is equal to f of z plus 0 which is equal to f of z right so instead of g of 1 i am going to write f of z is it okay yes fine so now you got f of f of a is equal to g of 0 is equal to g of 1 is equal to f of z. This is what you got now. Okay. And there was something which uh, you have to note. From where did this z come? Okay. This z was specifically coming from A, right? From where? Uh, okay, uh, we can also say that this A, right? You think about the A. Okay. You're going to fix an A belongs to A. That is what you had said earlier. That will mean that F of A is equal to W0. Okay, forget the Z belongs to A. You definitely have A belongs to capital A. So, I am getting here W naught is equal to F of A, is equal to G of 0, is equal to G of 1, is equal to F of Z. Fine. So, now what you got is, therefore, F of Z is equal to W naught. This will imply that the particular Z 
which we took from B A of epsilon. That is the open ball centered at A with radius epsilon. Inside that we took an arbitrary point Z. This Z is belonging to the capital A. So to conclude what we got is Z belongs to B A of epsilon will imply Z belongs to A. That is we just proved our claim that B A of epsilon is contained in A. Okay, so now how do we end up with? Okay, for an arbitrary fixed point small a belongs to A. You were able to find a number, positive number epsilon such that B A of epsilon is contained inside A which is the characterization of an open set and that will imply A is an open set. Okay. Now, already we had A to be a closed set. Now you have A to be an open set. In a particular topological space, the only sets which are both open and closed is phi and the whole set. So we are going to check whether uh, definitely, definitely that will imply either A is equal to phi or A is equal to the whole set. So here we are having the whole set to be capital C, which is the complex numbers. But A not equal to phi. Why? Because we had at first that set not belongs to A. Right? So A is not equal to 5. That means A is equal to script C or the set of all complex numbers. That means for every set belongs to the set of complex numbers f of z will be equal to w0 when w0 is a constant that is our fun function is constant okay now you have uh, two more questions you had uh, one two three four our question four is is there any requirement in the hypothesis that G is an open set, is it always essential? Okay. The same question is just changed to connected set that is is a is it required that g is always a connected set if it is not does the statement get to be something different okay this has to be asked also in the question so we can think about the question 6 as uh, the same interrogation of Question 4 and 5. In the preposition 3, 
of the appendix there we had the function to be from closed interval a b to c okay so is there some difference if we take to be open interval a b or the half closed half open interval a b or uh, the union disjoint union of open sets or the union or different type of union of intervals if the domain happens to be like that are there some differences okay so you have to check out whether <coughs> that happens in preposition 3 of appendix a okay these are things you have to uh, work upon and that's all for the session thank you have a great time